Hey guys, it's Brad. And this is Mary. And welcome to Fitness Testing. This week we're gonna be talking trail shoes. So these are our top three picks for the summer. And the reason we picked them is for versatility um, and their overall ability to be used for a variety of different things. So we're gonna jump right into it. The first one we have here is the Brooks Cascadia. So this is considered a mountain trail shoe. So that means it is gonna be a little bit different from the two others that we have up here. It does have a rock plate. So it is gonna have a little bit more of a sturdy feel to it. And it does have an actual plate designed into the shoe to help kind of absorb some of the shock and protect you from sharp rocks. Um, and footing that may not be ideal when you're out hiking or running or walking um, the trails, especially if you're gonna be up in the mountains. When I first started running trails uh, 10, 12 years ago, that the Cascadia was the shoe for me. I ran a lot of miles in the, the version four Cascadia. Um, it, it just, it feels so solid. It's just one that you could put it on a bomb and it will never disintegrate. For sure. So yeah, and again, this shoe does have a little bit of a stiffer feel to it. It is gonna be also a little bit more responsive because of that. It's also very stable. So if you like something that's a little bit softer, you know, maybe try something different. But overall, again, I feel like this shoe does have such good stability and such good protection and durability. It really does belong here in our top three for the summer, just because it is gonna last you for miles and miles and miles. So going into some stats on this, um, it does have four millimeter lugs, which are gonna be these little teeth on the bottom of the shoe. So they are, I would say, you know, average uh, depth here. Mm -hmm. um, so they're definitely gonna give you some traction there. And of course it is gonna rely on that rock plate as well. Um, it is a little bit of a heavier shoe. I think the women's weighs in at about nine and a half ounces and the men's weighs in at about 10 and a half. So it is a little bit heavier, um, but honestly, you can't really tell that. I actually wore this shoe um, this winter. I used it for a winter running shoe. I was super happy with it. Um, those lugs had absolutely no problem with snow, ice, rocks, anything like that. Uh, the next one we're gonna run into is the Saucony Peregrine. Um, so this is uh, version this is version 13. Version 13. So the shoe itself is a little bit more streamlined than what the Cascadia is going to be. It, it looks significantly different um, from the top because it is just a more streamlined shoe. Uh, but once you flip the shoe over and you see the lugs, these lugs are insane. Um, this version, uh, I feel like they did scale back the lugs a little bit. They changed the pattern a little bit more. Um, so it's got multi-directional lugs. So when you get that grip going uphill, you also get the grip going downhill. Uh, so you are gonna get some, some traction a little bit more than what you'd get in the Cascadia. Uh, what you get into with the Peregrine and the Speed Goat, which we'll go into next, uh, these are gonna be a little bit more rugged, a little bit more something that you would put into, say a Mud Run or a Spartan or something like that, where you just need a lot more structure to pull off of off of the shoe. For sure. So this shoe does not have a rock plate, which means it is gonna be a little bit more flexible and it's also gonna be lighter weight. It is actually the lightest of the three. So the women's weighs in at about eight and a half ounces. The men's weighs in at about 9.7. So definitely lighter weight if you are looking to shed some ounces um, and get something that is just a little bit less clunky. I would definitely recommend this. Saucony does use their Power Run midsole on this as well, so it is very, very soft while still durable. The lugs on this are five millimeters, so they're a little bit deeper than the Cascadia, and as Brad said, they are pretty aggressive here. They're gonna help with uphill and downhill traction. The upper two is, you know, it has a little bit of a toe cap, so it is gonna give you some protection from rocks and that sort of thing. If you want to do something that is a little bit more nitty gritty, more technical, and you need something that can handle that, the, the Peregrine definitely can answer that challenge. One thing that the Peregrine has that none of the others have is actually going to be this little hook right here. This actually is an attachment for a pair of gaiters, and you can put that over top of the shoe and it keeps dirt and debris out of the shoe. So another great aspect of the Saucony Peregrine. The last one we have on here, and probably Brad's favorite, 
is going to be the Speed Goat 5 from Hoka. Speed Goat 1, 2, 3, some people did claim that, you know, they felt like it was really too snug in the toe box um, because it does taper quite a bit through the toe. Uh, 4 and 5 have basically knocked it out of the park. You've got a little bit different upper with the with the Speed Goat 5. It's got a jackered knit. Um, one of the things that I really like is actually this piece right here. Uh, what that does is when you get the shoe cinched down and as the foot starts to swell, what that does, what that piece right there does is it actually opens up the toe box a little bit more. Uh, the other thing is Hoka uses what's called the Vibra Mega Grip, uh, Mega Grip outsole. What you've got here is this is very sticky rubber. Um, so I had a pair of version four that I took to Colorado uh, and went up to about 12,500 feet. Uh, and it was starting to mist. And one of the things that I loved about the Mega Grip is it actually does, when the rocks get damp or slightly damp, it does actually grip a little bit more than what you might get in some of the others. You still have the five millimeter uh, lugs. It's gonna have, it's the shape on the lugs are a little bit different than the others where they're, they're kind of, um, they're, they're two layer lugs, which is, sounds weird, but they are uh, multi-directional. Uh, the thing that I love the most though is the cushion. Uh, this does not have a rock plate like the Cascadia or like previous versions of the Peregrine, uh, but what you get in this is you get a really soft cush. And I thought it felt exactly like a Clifton um, or even a, an Arahi. If you are a fan of those, it does have that cush. Um, and it's really not that heavy. I was super surprised. You know, a lot of trail shoes, they tend to get super, super heavy. They do get a little clunky. And I felt like this was maybe a touch heavier than our standard road running shoe. But I felt like, you know, it was worth it for that cushion and the fit. It didn't really fit clunky or big like some trail shoes do because they will fit a little differently. I felt like it locked down on my, my foot nicely and I was super happy with it. I honestly feel like when it's time for a new pair of Hoka's, I think the Speed Goat 5 will be my next one because again, I'm looking for something this summer that is very versatile and that's why it is on our list here. Now these have been our top three. We wanna know what your top three are. Uh, put some comments in the, in the feedback below and we'd love to hear that from you. These are all going to be available on shop.fitnesssports.com. Uh, make sure to head to the website, find what we've got available. We've got some really nice colors available on the website. So please go to shop.fitnesssports.com and check them out. Thanks for watching, guys. This has been Fitness Tested. Be sure to like and subscribe to keep up to date with all of our videos.